Let's get started anyway. So thank you very much for coming to the Open Day Talk for our strength and conditioning degree at St Mary's University. Uh, I'm not actually Alex Bliss. You can tell that my name is Phil Price. Alex Bliss is the programme director, so he runs the uh, programme uh, I teach underneath him. So I'm a senior lecturer here in strength and conditioning. So just a, an overview, um, St Mary's is so renowned for its sport. And a lot of that is because of the links we have with uh, the sporting world. So to put it into context, if St. Mary's was their own country that entered into the uh, Rio Olympics, we would have come 25th based on medal count. Now that is really quite impressive. We've got a lot of students that have come here and become great athletes. Not only that, they've become great coaches, they've become great uh, educators. Um, we are just enriched within sport. And here are just some examples of some of the top athletes that have come through St. Mary's. Uh, David Weir trained here for years. We've got the So Mo Farah running track, because um, Mo Farah pretty much started our endurance uh, team back when he was a student and has obviously gone on to uh, be incredibly successful. Um, just a highlight, there's, oh, there's obviously a picture, if I move this particular one, there's a picture of Usain Bolt, who's actually sprinting on the St. Mary's track. I remember one time I was walking between lectures and I had a spare five minutes and I knew Usain Bolt was at the St. Mary's track. So I sprinted down there to hopefully get a glimpse of him sprinting just to see how fast he was. And he's such a chilled out character that I actually managed to get those five minutes in his break between sprints. I was a bit gutted I never got to see him sprint, but it's just a testament to the fact that we've had high caliber, caliber athletes uh, come to this institution. <clears throat> so just a few stats just to show off at St Mary's, uh, one of the key things is what we're particularly proud of. So we received a silver in the teaching excellence framework, which I think really highlights just how important teaching is to St Mary's. Say you've got the bigger institutions such as the Oxfords and the Cambridges. Uh, they're so enriched within research that you often get a lot of the grad assistants or PhD students teaching the courses. We don't have a, anything like that. The, the lecturers here are the full-time lecturers. We also do research, but it doesn't mean that we also have students of our own that are teaching our undergraduate degrees. And because of that, that's what's maintained such a high level of teaching. And it really sort of shows whenever we have some form of um, student survey, St Mary's and not only St Mary's but SNC always do particularly well. Um, I believe we got a 93 in overall satisfaction from our national student survey last year. Uh, and we are typically one of the highest performing degrees, not only in the university, but also in, in the country. So people ask me, what is strength and conditioning? Because they kind of get a rough idea of, of what it is based on the name. They think strength, that's the first thing that hits them. So they think, oh, okay, let's get stronger in the weight room. And there's an element of truth to that, but really it's all about developing uh, human performance, in particular, the physical side. So we want to think about, okay, what are the scientific principles underpinning how we get better as an athlete? And also as a coach, how can we implement those scientific principles into a program that's going to make an athlete reach the highest level that they are capable of, of doing. So that's what I, I try and see it like there's strength. Yes, strength is important, but strength comes in different forms. It isn't all about just lifting as much weight as possible. Um, and there's obviously conditioning. We want to make sure not only are we fit enough to actually perform at the sport that we're doing, but our tissues, so our muscles and our tendons, they are conditioned to be able to deal with the amount of stress that goes on during a sporting activity. Um, I often utilize, let's move this thing here. There you go. I often utilize this diagram here just to show off where strength and conditioning sits. So you've clearly got on the left here, if you're looking at the screen, someone's got injured and they go through their injury assessment. And then as they go through that process, you're going through a return to play strategy you're going through rehabilitation, maybe some prehabilitation type strategies, and then you're moving into the athletes healthy. Okay, how can we actually improve their performance? 
So I see SNC science as the area or the, the right half of this, uh, this continuum here. Yeah, we're all about improving performance, but quite often how we improve performance is trying to make sure that we are uh, ensuring our athletes stay on the training field, they stay on the pitch. Because if you're going to get better at football, the best way to get better at football is play football. So we want to make sure that they are not getting injured so they can continue playing football so they can get better. So for example, like it's still uh, highlighting the, the, the strength example. If you were coaching Lionel Messi, he's the best football player in the world. Improving his squat score may uh, make him stronger, but you've got to start asking yourself, will it actually um, make him a better player? It might do because it might make him stronger. His tissues are stronger, so he can able to maybe run faster or deal with change of direction better, so it reduces the chance of injury. Um, so those are the types of things that we, we cover. And you can see, if you move on to the left side of the continuum, you've got sports rehab, which is another course at St. Mary's. And they really interlink because they deal a lot of stuff with uh, returning athletes back to the pitch, where we do a lot of stuff involving trying to make sure that they, they don't get injured in the first place. So there's a clear overlap. And then breaking down s &C a little bit more, I, I try and see it uh, more as uh, three different components. So we've got physiology, biomechanics, and skill acquisition. Okay. So if we um, look at the athlete in the picture, he's performing some form of counter movement jump to jump as high as possible. Okay. So he is expressing force into the ground so it reacts and then he jumps up into the air. So that expression of force is all about biomechanics. Physiology is all about, okay, how can our physical system enable us to produce that force in that way? So it's how strong are uh, our muscles, how good are our tendons for lengthening like a spring and then recalling like an uh, like a elastic band? How can they deal with that elastic energy? So they're quite chicken and egg because you need good physiology to produce good biomechanics, but you also need good biomechanics and that force to really stimulate the growth that's going to improve your physiology. So you see you've really got an inter interconnection there. And then we've also got skill acquisition. So performing counter movement jump, you might seem as quite an easy skill, but it is still a skill. So we need to know how can we improve our ability to produce that skill. So if we think our performance at getting as high as possible is all about how we push into the ground, our ability to move quickly in the jump is going to determine how well we produce force into the ground, and that's going to determine how well we can jump high. So our, our ability to, to perform a skill is really quite important. So that, yeah, they're all the key pillars and they're all interlinked. Uh, and from that overview I gave, they're kind of tied into the, the key um, uh, arrows you can see coming out of the uh, picture of the jumper. Things like how we express force, ad adaptations to the muscles, the specific skill itself, how good are we at doing that? Those are the key things that we would actually be learning. And that's really important for S&C. Well, now, once we understand the, the science behind how we perform, we need to start thinking about, okay, how are we going to get that performance out of our athletes? And some of that is coming from the programming. So we probably might do some testing and some monitoring to understand how our athletes are improving or if they're not improving. There might be times where they're really, really tired and we need to know when that occurs because quite often with athletes they want to play all the time and if they're tired they're not going to tell you so maybe there's some physical evidence that shows actually they're they're tiring so we can make changes to their program to make sure that they perform in a, in a game on saturday because ultimately their their performance is the is the aim goal so not only utilizing that science understanding and the information we're getting from testing our approach is really quite important and so we need to think about, okay, our coaching style. What style matches us? You've probably seen coaches that are much louder, they're very extrovert, and then you've got coaches that are much quieter, they're much more introverted. So usually people find their own coaching style that's kind of aligned to their, uh, their personality type. 
within that, you can develop your own culture. So athletes tend to work well together. As long as the athletes have buy-in, as you as a coach, and they want to come to training, they want to do this and they want to do that, they tend to improve. You could write the most perfect scientifically uh, program available, but if the, if the athlete doesn't enjoy the environment that they're training in, it's not going to work. So all of that is then going to be affected by, okay, what age are you working with? Youth athletes, uh, adolescence athletes, elite athletes, non-amateur uh, athletes. And then we've got the sport. The sport is going to affect how you approach the programming, how you approach your coaching staff. So as you can see, there's a lot of factors involved. And then within that factor, you've got to notice that everyone is different. So everything ends up being individualized. So that's why it's such a fascinating area because it's, everything is so different. <clears throat> so we've got the two areas there, the understanding of the scientific principles of strength and conditioning, training, theory and application. But we also know, need to know the side of it with the coaching and also the testing and monitoring techniques. And that's all the information we need to actually improve human performance. But there's also things that I think are really important from a degree in general, and that's something that we put a lot of emphasis on, is your skills as, as a person. So the transferable skills that are important are your ability to think critically. Okay, so we don't want you to end up being someone that comes to a lecture, we present information, and then go, okay, I believe everything you say. We want you to be critical, to ask questions, because whenever you're reading or whenever you're watching something on YouTube, we want your, the cogs in your head to start thinking, oh, is that right? Is that wrong? What's my opinion on it? So there's no black and white in, in strength and conditioning. So if you can develop that critical and that curiosity, that's what's going to make you a better s &C coach or any coach of any type like that. So it's the ability to be critical. And then once you've been critical and sort of identified all the sources of information that's in front of you, you need to problem solve. If you're working with an athlete, they're gonna move a certain way. They're gonna deal with load and stress a different way. So this all presents information. So you need to make a decision based on that, based on the scientific principles that you know, to make a decision on how we're gonna program, how we're gonna interact with this athlete to make sure that their performance slowly improves. Not only that, we want you to be good regarding practical side of SNC, but most uh, coaches are also very good at communicating in other ways. So we want them to be good at presentations, good at writing, good at getting across their ideas. These are all skills that we want everyone to develop. And I think what I want to try and get across with this slide is just how far reaching SNC is. I think people, when think of, people think of uh, SNC, they think of elite sport and you're like there's some sports scientist that provides support to elite athletes that's going to improve performance. But if you actually take the, the definition of SNC, which is trying to improve human performance, human performance occurs in every single type of domain. So whether you've got athletes, whether you've got um, people in the private sector, you've got people at universities, health and fitness, amateur weekend warriors, amateur athletes, different institutions, all of these sort of things. SNC principles can be applied to anything that wants to get better. And I think people are starting to understand that because as the, uh, the degree goes on and on and on, people are going into different roles uh, post university. And it just shows how diverse the skills that you get from this course are, and you can apply them in any worldwide situation. Cool. So to enable us to, to do that, we have um, a long, rich history of being a degree program that really enhances these particular skills. So we don't want to be a degree program or we haven't certainly since we uh, were created back in 2007 as a degree program that just focuses on the science it's all about the science 
the application of science and the critical roles. So what's enabled us to, to do that is the fact that we have been around the longest. We were the first S&C degree in this country. Uh, started in 2007. So all of that experience has uh, been brought together to constantly reevaluate and recreate this degree program to make it more effective of making sure that you are the most employable SNC coach once you leave the degree. So because of that, we have a real strong emphasis on practical skills. Okay, so a lot of our uh, assessments are practical driven. It isn't all about essays. There are essays because we want to improve the written word because it's a good form of communication. But practical skills is what you will essentially be doing in the job, so we need to try and enhance them. Not only that, we try and improve technical skills, skills that we wanted in, in the industry, and that's because we have so many links with clubs, schools, all sorts of industries that have come to us saying, these are the skills we want our uh, future employees to have. How can you get these into your degree program to make sure that they're ready for employment once they've finished? So that's where we place the, uh, the emphasis on developing those scientific skills and then developing the sort of industry led skills so that you're much more employable. So to help you do that, we've got a team here that are um, incredibly capable and have been around for a long time and developed lots of skills and which we want to give to you guys. So not only what's great about our course is that if you compare our SNC degree to other SNC degrees in the country, you'll find that you'll have the SNC degrees are, are run by academics, which is great. Researchers, that's really good. But you need a balance because we want to make sure you have the practical skills ready for employment. So we need a good balance between researchers and coaches. And these are the these form the lecturers that we have here. So not only do we as a teaching staff have a strong background in uh in research in our in our sports but we also have a strong background in coaching in our sports so to the left you see there's a list of sports we've all individually got uh experience coaching at a pretty high level for example um in these sports so i've already mentioned alex name who runs the um runs the course he's the guy i use my cursor there he is in the blue blue shirt so he actually works for england golf um so like he is working with athletes that are the next generation when it comes to golf we've got people that worked in elite sport like matt just below him um uh, was the snc coach down at uh, he's worked at brentford he's worked at watford he's worked at brighton so these are elite sports like, these guys know what they're talking about when it comes to applying scientific principles and yeah, here are just examples of research. And again, we've got, because we've got academics that are, or coaches that are quite wide ranging in the range of different sports, our research has also been quite wide ranging as well. So we've got Matt, obviously he's worked in football. So his, his research is focused on football. Jamie comes from uh, 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 Derby cricket. So he's, his research is focused on cricket. Uh, Giuseppe is, uh, works in professional kickboxing. So his, his research is in kickboxing. So you start to see where not only they have a lot of uh, experience working in the sport, but then they've taken that experience to try and find out more about how you work in the sport. So this is our mission, okay? This degree will provide a high quality learning experience that will allow students to become critical, independent thinkers. That's really key. Critical, independent thinkers, knowledgeable and effective coaches. So understanding the scientific principles and then applying that in a coaching setting. That have the skills to be highly employable upon graduation. So that kind of sums up the key components that I've discussed so far. So, comes to your degree it's kind of we kind of do it in several levels so the first year is very practical we try and maintain that practicalness as we go through the three years but we want to try and make it as practical as possible uh, straight away and mainly that is because we want everyone to have a good understanding of what uh, the athlete will end up going through so a lot of our practical sessions are us coaching you so ultimately 
when it comes to the assessments at the end of these modules in your first year, we want you to explain certain exercises and mechanical and anatomical principles which set them apart. We want you to understand the exercises because later on you're going to start applying them, but we need to know that you understand them uh, really effectively first. So once you can describe all the exercises, it's now about analyzing. Okay, we're now starting to use them as a coach. We're starting to get introduced to monitoring principles and start to assess our athletes progress. So that generally happens in, in the th second year. Then once we move into third year, it's about applying everything in specific contexts. So you've learned all the exercises, you've learned how to coach them. Okay, now we need to apply that to specific sports and we need to evaluate if what we're doing is appropriate for that sport and for that athlete. And we do that in a number of ways. Um, so we try and um, develop it further on, providing that base science in the first year, start to provide a bit more depth to the science underpinning stuff in second year and make that more apply applied. And then you start going into more of the programming and the critique of programming is much more in your, in your third year. And to assess how well you're doing there, we have a number of different ways that we assess. We are not one of those um, university degrees where it's very exam based. So yes, there are the odd online tests and exams, but those are usually to get us to understand that you, you, you understand the content. A lot of the uh, assessments will be us watching you perform a virus so as explain uh, a particular exercise and why but also coaching viva we want to see you coach if we if we want you to be ready to coach once you leave university we need to make sure that you can do it at the end of your three years so it's all about uh, doing that on top of that we have a number of things which uh, we hope to assess based on developing certain skills excel is really key for a, a, a strength and conditioning coach so we need to make sure that your excel programming is up to scratch um, with the rise of social media, coaches now understand just how much building that, that social platform is good for their career. So we have stuff on website design, uh, portfolios, uh, even making a little DVD, which is always something that there is a group assessment that people enjoy. And ultimately there's also presentations. But what I hope you guys understand from what all the things I've just listed, is that a lot of our assessments involve you speaking in front of someone else. So if you've got, if you're coaching, you're speaking in front of an athlete. If you're coaching a group of people, you're speaking in front of many athletes. Sometimes you're speaking in front of athletes and their parents, for example. You need to be confident speaking in public. So that's why a lot of our assessments try and get that for you to, well, try and develop that skill because it's something that you're going to need. So we do a lot of our teaching in the Performance Education Centre. Uh, the best picture is the bottom left one where you can really see it's a really high-end facility and one of the best in the UK. It actually is split into three sections where you've got one which is an AstroTurf which we use for a lot of our speed, uh, agility, uh, all those skills, field-based skills. We've got a weightlifting section on the left and then we've got a gym-based section on the right. Uh, so we do a lot of our teaching here which I think shows off our teaching skills um, because we might have a few slides and discuss a concept then we give a task and then we get everyone to try and break down the task and try and uh, be critical about the task and that might lead to more discussion then we might go back to the lecture a few more slides introduce another task go away do the task more questions so see it's very student-based led and we want to get discussions because that's where some of the best learning occurs. Um, so even though there are lectures, typically you might have one lecture for, for a module, you have one lecture on Tuesday and then you have a practical uh, seminar on the Friday, for example. Uh, so we do have sit down lectures, but at the same time, a lot of the seminars is building on the stuff that we've learned in the lecture and allowing you to get your hands dirty. Essentially, we want you to be a good coach so practice coaching and doing all these exercises. And the best place to do that is in the, in the Performance Education Center. What's also very good 
is that students that are on the SNC degree can use this facility for free in the evening. So that's typically between the hours of, I'd say about half five till nine o'clock, uh, Monday to Friday. This is available for you to use free. That is as a gym, but we see it as a, as a chance for you to get in there and practice. Um, we don't want people just going there to do some bicep curls because they're going out later. We want people to practice using all of the kit that is in the performance center. So the best way to do it is just sort of be in the environment and get creative and learn. So other exciting features are the study abroad. So the first semester in second year, you have the option to go study in several countries. Uh, so far, people have only gone to America, but there is still the opportunity if people wanted to, to go to Australia. Um, this is, <coughs> uh, I think, is an excellent opportunity, um, mainly because our education is slightly different to the American education. I find the American education is much more test and a bit more memory based, whereas there's a bit more critical thinking discussion. And I'm not here to like say which one's better, but I have found that people are often gone to do the study abroad and then come back and experience two different styles of learning. And then once they reach third year, they found their own way of learning. They, they know which way they prefer and then they implement that into their revision and how they learn with all the resources. So being exposed to different styles of learning, I think is really important. So that's why I'd recommend the study abroad. Uh, there's also this Mary Strength group. Uh, which is a weightlifting and powerlifting group, um, which uh, they were champions of the British universities uh, four times in their inception. Um, so we always try and give them a bit of a shout out. Uh, the guy in the picture is Adam Matusi, who um, didn't start weightlifting until he came to St Mary's and ended up lifting for, the, uh, for England in the European Championships. Um, he now works as an SNC coach for the Royal Ballet, uh, and he is, uh, I'm his PhD supervisor. Uh, so he's looking at how, what about jumping in ballet uh, leads to injury. So he's had a real roller coaster of uh, time since he's been at St. Mary's, like he's really taken advantage of it. So it just shows what you can, can do through the degree. On top of this, we make sure everyone is prepared for the UK SEAs, the UK Strength and Conditioning Association, and the NSCA, the National Strength and Conditioning Association, that's the American version. Uh, both of them have an accreditation, uh, which you can take. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get accredited by completing the degree. Uh, the UKSCA don't do that for any degrees, unfortunately. But we've geared our learning content to make sure that once you finish third year, everyone is in the right position to take the UKSCA accreditation and pass it. The NSCA one is uh, actually a multiple choice question which you can do in central London um, if you uh, you can do it at any time the problem is uh, you have to wait until you finish the degree because you have to send a copy of your um, certificate degree certificate and first aid to America to prove that you can uh, that you've done it so even though you can take the NCA accreditation early you won't actually receive the accreditation until you've completed your degree Okay, so the most important thing, and we highlight this to every student uh, and they, when they come in, is that the best way to be uh, some form of coach is to expose yourself to that coach early on and do lots and lots and lots of coaching. So everything that we learn in seminars and practicals is just the supplementation to make you better at the coaching opportunities. So we want to make sure that once everyone finishes their th three years at St. Mary's, they're a coach with a good CV rather than a recently graduated student with some coaching experience. There's a big difference. So if you can get as much coaching experience as you can during your three years, you're gonna look much more favorable to uh, future employers. So first of all, we try and encourage everyone to coach as soon as they get here, year one. Um, we have some year one students who actually coach people in their um from their halls uh you have to declare it to the pec so they they can bring in that other student so for example if your your halls friend uh is in business they don't get access to the pec but 
you being their coach means that they can come in for an hour and you coach them directly. So that is, that is possible. So people do that a lot because it's quite nice one-on-one -on -one with a mate just to practice some things when you're learning how to do coaching for the first time. Uh, and some of our sports teams also have S&C support, which you can get involved with as well. Once you move into second year, that's when you should start looking at external work placements. Um, we offer a lot of external work placements. Uh, we do it in such a way that the placement comes to us, we advertise it, and then you have to send us your CV and cover letter, and then you go through an interview. So the idea is that by doing that regularly through different work experiences, you're getting practice at developing your CV, interview practice, so that when you reach the end of third year, you're very ready for the interview process. So you should start doing that in year two, because in year three, you have a, um, one of the modules, uh, you get assessed for your work placement. So you provide information and a presentation of your experience during a work placement and what you've learned. So uh, your work placement actually goes towards university credit. So we, that's where you should be looking for. And because of that, that's where a lot of clubs, Fulham in particular, Fulham Football Club, uh, they want students within this three-year pathway, the ones that are doing their work placement for that particular module. Um, so they often only take in uh, end of year two or beginning of year three students because they know they're getting university credit for it. And here are some typical work placement opportunities. These are really growing. So you can see there's a mix of rowing, football, rugby, uh, a real mix, but Areas that are really growing are private schools. So private schools are really upping their S&C for their, their sports teams. And also um, uh, well, other sports that are typically haven't because of cultural issues, but now do. So golf. So golf is not, hasn't been one for S&C for a while, but it's really, really growing has a lot of money so that's because people are starting to see the importance of it so they're definitely areas and what i found with more and more with students is that they come to the, deg uh, the degree as a coach in a particular sport then all of a sudden they get to the end of three years they are for example a gymnast coach and an snc coach and then they use the snc to make them into an even better gymnast coach so they have different strings to their bow, which makes them very much more employable to the governing bodies that are overseeing that sport. So I think swimming was one, gymnastics was one, where they essentially created a role for themselves based on their experience at St Mary's. So the entry requirements. So there's a minimum of around 96 to 112 uh, points, which is BBC at A level or merit to merit distinction at BTEC. Okay, so this, yeah, those are the general entry requirements. Um, typically, we, you know, we have the standards, you know, grade C in English and maths uh, at GCC level. Uh, really, we want to see A levels uh, in scientific subjects. Uh, they cover the basic ones like maths, physics, and that, but also PE, human, human biology, those sorts of uh, those sorts of uh, subjects. Um, there are some. Not necessarily leeway, but there are some different different uh, entry requirements. If you're a mature student, who um, uh, if you're actually mature is anyone over the age of 21, um, because they've been out of schooling for some time, they, they have other qualifications which may go towards uh, their entry requirements. So if they've done uh, a reps level three in personal training, uh, if you're over 21, that can be uh, used as part of your entry requirement. Yeah. So just a final, let's see where everyone can go. And this is really growing with each year. Uh, so people often think, okay, we're working in an S&C coach, working for sports. So, you know, that's with elite sports, it's with youth sports. Uh, I think everyone should uh, work with youth sports because you learn so much more. Uh, with elite, they're already elite. So you can't really do too much with them aside from trying to make sure that they don't get injured. Whereas youth athletes, you know, they're, they're growing. You, you, what you do as an SNC coach makes much, a much greater um, impact on their development and their progress in their sport. Um, not only that, 
SNC coaches, uh, SNC facilities are opening up more and more across the country where this degree plays a large role. Uh, you don't get reps level three through doing this degree. Ha however, the only reason that some gyms look for reps level three is for insurance purposes. So if you, ha if you have your own insurance purposes, then you can work anywhere essentially. And there are so many different um, CrossFit boxes and all sorts of SNC facilities are opening up, which uh, in cater for people with SNC degrees and they don't look for just reps level three. Um, I think that's a real key area. Uh, the weekend warriors because there's there's sports that are really growing and people understanding the role that science support plays S uh, cycling triathlon are getting huge um with weekend warriors and people understanding just how important snc is uh pe teaching so a lot of our snc students actually go on to do one year pgce sometimes at st mary's after their degree um which I think is really important because who has most access to youth athletes when they're at their prime for making improvement in, in sport? PE teachers. So I think this is essential. Um, and funny enough, in our masters uh, in SNC, we're getting a lot of PE teachers come to our master's degree because they understand that's the scientific knowledge that they need to apply in their PE, PE lessons. And then on top of that, a lot of people have further have gone on to further education. So we have a sports rehab degree, we have a physiotherapy degree, we have an MRes degree, a Masters of Research. Um, all of these degrees fit in really nicely uh, with our SNC degree. Uh, ultimately, if you did your three years with SNC, you might have a rough idea of what type of population that you'd want to work with. So a lot of people that want to work still within sport do a sports rehab masters. Those that want to work with more vulnerable populations, elderly populations, uh, often go and do uh, a physiotherapy degree. Um, but having a good understanding of SNC principles really helps uh, both of those master's degrees. Okay. And just, this is more of a, okay, why? Like, yeah, we've understand how, um, how important the, the, the role that SNC plays within human performance, but there's also the role it can uh, provide regarding satisfaction. Uh, ultimately, with human performance, that performance could be anything, and that gives a level of satisfaction to that athlete or person. So there's a real self uh, satisfaction that comes with the role. You are helping people get better at what they do, and that's a really quite uh, important. Uh, I think a really important thing for a career um, because you're constantly interacting with different people, different sports, different clubs. I think it's quite dynamic. People don't often work with one team and then they settle there for like 20, 25 years. They're constantly moving around, constantly learning. So it's really quite a dynamic pathway and you never get bored. Um, a lot of people travel. If you've got a, an elite sport role, people travel. Uh, I work closely with uh, the England sevens team. Uh, and you know, with with their seven series, they go to Dubai, South Africa, Australia. Like uh, I get pictures of them in the most fancy hotels in Dubai. Um, it looks incredible, uh, and they get you know they get a good wage. Like you you can you often start off around twenty k salary, but I know people working in football that are up at hundred k plus, which is crazy. <clears throat> And here are just some examples of people that have gone through the degree and had great sport, uh, a great career. So if we go down to the bottom right-hand corner, that is uh, Charlie Moore, who's the SNC coach down at Tottenham. He's currently there working with Harry Kane. Um, next to him on the left, uh, Gareth Tong, head of SNC at Harlequins Rugby Club. Move across again, you've got Ben Richens, who is like the head SNC for Paralympic powerlifting in the UK. Uh, he sometimes comes back and does some lecturing for us as well. Really knowledgeable guy. Uh, Katie went to work for the, the sports development for the University of Brighton. Uh, Lawrence in the middle, he is a PE teacher uh, and is starting his own book and video. Above is Tom, who he's got a WASPs uh, logo on, but he actually is the head SNC coach for England men's sevens. Uh, Andy to his left, started his own company and his own company goes into schools and provides SNC support. 
And then Mitchell, last of all, um, he did an internship at Crystal Palace and they liked him so much that they made a role for him and he still works there. So you can see all these people have different pathways, but you know, there are the created roles themselves through business or they've got a role in elite sport. Either way, they've been incredibly successful and they often come back, either teach or give advice and that sort of thing. So that finishes the, the, the lecture. So again, Alex is the program director. So you have any questions, don't hesitate to either find him on Twitter or uh, send him an email. Um, I will still be here to ask, answer any questions, uh, but that is, that, is my, that is my presentation. Hope everyone enjoyed it and it answers a lot of questions that people may have had.